Hi, I'm Jeff Gonzalez, president of Trident Concepts, and today I'm here with Brownell's Daily Defense to talk to you about EDC revolver considerations. So revolvers have been around for a long time, and they're a very viable platform for a concealed carry format. But there's a couple things that you might wanna consider before you choose. The first thing is the size. So when we look at EDC revolvers, we're gonna have a very close parallel between the full size, compact, subcompact, and the micro compacts. For our EDC needs, we're gonna be focused around the compact and the subcompact frames. So when we start to think about that, the other thing that we need to consider is the caliber. So for our defensive needs, we probably wanna go no smaller than a 38. And then on the flip side, we probably want to go no higher than a 357. So that's 38 Special and 357 Magnum. While there's calibers larger and smaller that can be in these frames, you probably want to stick to those two caliber choices when it comes to an EDC revolver. There's a couple of reasons why. The biggest one being controllability during the uh, during the engagement portion. The smaller the frame, the harder that controllability will be. Now. When it comes to these frame sizes, caliber will also affect the weight of these guns. So um, the first Model 19 carry comp that I have here, this is a fantastic carry gun and it's pretty heavy. It's about 30 ounces. And so then the next model that I have is this 340 PD, which is, I'm sorry, MMP 340, which is about 16 ounces, significant difference in weight. So while this is rated to fire 357, I probably wouldn't want to do that in that particular size frame because that controllability is going to be very challenging for me. But the other problem that I get into is the weight. So as I go up in the calibers, the larger projectiles are going to increase that weight. So if you already have a heavy gun with larger caliber, you're going to see that increase in weight. Now, there's always going to be give and take. There's always pros and cons there. So you're just going to want to evaluate that based off of your needs. Now, the next thing that we talk about are the actions. So here with this Model 19, I have a traditional double action, single action. So I have an exposed hammer and I can choose to either fire this double action or I could thumb cock and fire this single action. So you've got some options. With this MMP 340, this has got no exposed hammer. So this is double action only. So again, pros and cons. The the idea behind having the option to go to single action might be if I need to take a precise shot or a reduced target type shot. Yeah, that might help me with the lighter trigger pull. The pro behind the, um, the zero exposed hammer for the smaller frame guns would be that if I have to get in close and tight proximity or if I'm shooting entangled, I don't have that exposed hammer to get caught on things or snagged on things. So again, you're gonna have to evaluate what is in your best interest. When it comes to capacity, as a revolver, you know that the capacity is going to be on the lower end. So that Model 19 has a standard capacity of six. Now, there are some revolvers in these compact frames that will hold seven, and in the larger frames that will hold eight. So we're starting to see something outside of the traditional six. When we move down to that subcompact, now we're looking at five, and that's a reasonable loadout. I mean, it can solve all your problems in a single cylinder, but we really are pushing the envelope there. So the capacity might also be something that you wanna consider. And then lastly is gonna be the carry methods. So with this smaller, lighter subcompact frame, I've got a couple of extra options. I can stick this in a pocket. I can stick this in an ankle holster. I can carry it in a traditional on the waistband holster as well. With that compact frame, I'm really limited in carrying it on my waistband. Now I could carry it on the waistband or in the waistband, but it's going to be around my waistband. So, as it relates to the EDC revolvers, you've got some really good choices. And what I try to tell people is that don't look at it as being undergunned because if, you, if you're if you aware of the limitations of the firearm and you put that into your you know daily kind of situational awareness, you're gonna stand a good chance of having enough ammunition to solve whatever problems that you're faced with. So that really doesn't have a lot of merit to some extent. 
However, it is a limitation. It is a reason why some people avoid them. The bottom line is that they still provide good opportunities for some people in certain circumstances. All right, please post your questions down below. Until then, take care and stay safe.